Welcome to the Gaming Trend Podcast, the official podcast of GamingTrend.com. My name is Anthony Shelton, and I am joined by David Burdett. Hello there. And Noah Rigsby. Hello, everyone. Oh, my gosh. You sound so good. Yeah, right. <laughs> the better mic there. The upgrade. <laughs> he tried to play that one up. There you go. Uh, in this podcast, we talk about the latest games we could get our hands on. We talk about our backlogs that we should have got our hands on a long time ago. And games you absolutely need to play. We also squeeze the news. Today is a day that is just news. There's, there's really <laughs> oh, no, yeah. Just, we've been playing games. Don't get it. There's plenty of games we've been playing. Uh, I can officially say I've been playing Diablo 4, but this nice. is not a week to talk about that. We're going to talk about Summer Game Fest. If you cannot tell by the background, if you're watching, if you're listening, yes, it is Summer Game Fest time. We are here. You're doing the thing. Um, Well, okay, let me change that. We are not here. David, though. (laughs) That is is why I'm in a different uh, environment when it comes to my setup, because we spent this whole time fighting with... (laughs) So I forgot to bring my extra webcam because my wife's laptop, which is fantastic, does not have a built-in webcam. We fought with Ron's that does. However, because it's Windows 11, it apparently has <laughs> disabled said webcam, and he cannot do anything to make it re- recognize it. So oh. I'm on a phone, <laughs> which thankfully, hey. great camera. <laughs> After 2020, everything is possible. It doesn't even matter. Yep. You got we got professionals doing phones with terrible audio, so it's fine. It, yeah, at least I brought a good headset so that my audio is not awful. Yeah. So it is Summer Games Fest. So, David, you are there. How has it been so far? What, what is it? Give us the whole rundown. So I have to at least say that flight over was good, but I spent my entire flight playing Fire Emblem Engage. <laughs> There you go. That's a, that's a good choice. <laughs> yeah. So I was I, I I got the switch out as soon as they said that it was we could go ahead and and use our electronic devices. I booted up. I'm like I could play Zelda. I'm like, but I don't. I'd rather play with my pro controller, and I don't really want to put the kickstand out on the on the tra- table tray <laughs> because it's like. Um, it is a little bit bumpy in certain areas. I'm like, I don't want the switch to fall or anything. So I'm like, what can I play that'll be a little easier to, you know, not where I'm not as reliant on the joy cons <laughs> and man, fire emblem is so, it is so buttery pretty on, I'm sure were you playing it handheld or were you playing it on TV when you did Anthony? I did both. Okay. Like, the, I played it on, actually, I played it in every <laughs> scenario possible. I played it on handheld. I played it in 1080p. I played it on a 4K screen. So, yes, I. <laughs> you you Dr. All. Seuss, huh? <laughs> yeah, all of it. So, I, I have the OLED, and oh my goodness, it is so pretty on the it OLED. Is. Those cutscenes are gorgeous yeah. on the OLED. Um, having a ton of fun with it. I will be. I have I had two flights on the way in because I had a connecting and then on the way out I have one. I will be playing Fire Emblem the rest of the way back home is for certain. (laughs) So thank you, Anthony, for (laughs) showing game footage and uh, literally doing your job on the podcast of convincing people to buy (laughs) video games because that one was totally worth it. I even went out and picked up three houses while it was on sale because I need more Fire Emblem to play. (laughs) So. You have, you have now used your Switch <laughs> more than you did last year just by playing Fire Emblem. If I look at the actual t- time frames, I've probably used it 10 times more. <laughs> <laughs> like if there, if, if there was a counter, it would probably be like 10 times at this point because Breath yeah. of the Wild and Fire Emblem have very much sucked me in. So definitely will continue to play both. Um, but Summer Games Fest got here... Got to uh, chill out. Uh, Editor-in-Chief Ron Burke and I uh, went out to Little Tokyo uh, because we wanted to enjoy ourselves and also make Noah extremely jealous For the at third all the time, places. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not even been, you know, 72 hours and he's rubbed it in my face. <laughs> 72, 72 times. Oh, uh, goodness. But it was... Uh, so that was good and everything. But, of course, the big... Summer Games Fest event was today as far as the live show goes, and it was held at the YouTube Theater, which is 
I, I did not realize until we got there it is connected to SoFi. <laughs> So it's literally oh, yeah, a part. What? It's literally a part of the Rams Chargers Stadium. Like, wait, it is? Yes. <laughs> Did not know that. <laughs> wait, YouTube theaters in Inglewood? <clears throat> yep. Yep. Had to I Uber can walk ourselves from out there, there. To, from my house out there. Like, I grew up in Inglewood. I could literally walk to SoFi. Like, like it takes me right, five minutes. You should have taken the day off. <laughs> I didn't know. We could have got a, you. We could. You could at least there. bought a ticket. Yeah, for ten bucks, they were giving. They were pretty much giving them away today. Oh my god! This is when you realize you yeah, can hear yourself through which, the wall. <laughs> which <laughs> that's a like we literally went and had In and Out right there in Inglewood. Oh my gosh! Yeah, y'all were literally <laughs> right in where I grew now up. Now I'm mad. <laughs> Me too. I'm frustrated. I should have taken yeah. this day off. Yeah, it was uh, it was pretty great getting to go out there and and check everything out. Uh, the show it was pretty. I'll be honest, we went in, we watched the show, we went out, we didn't really mingle. That'll be taking place as we go through all the different stuff this week, which uh, we're going to be at the previously announced play days the next two days, checking out some of the stuff that's been announced, as well as we will be at the Xbox show and the Ubisoft show and checking out some other stuff and the Final Fantasy 16 launch event. So all stuff that's going to be really, really cool. Looking forward to it. But of course, the big thing today was the show and super comfortable. YouTube theater was really nice. Uh, really, the it was really cool getting to see the stage set. Um, I guess one of the things that was a little bit interesting was they had three screens set up and Maybe I'm just dis- maybe I'm just so spoiled <laughs> by having either a big TV at my house or I have a humongous computer monitor, but it felt better. <laughs> it felt like it would have been better if I was in front of my computer monitor watching compared to like if it makes sense like to watch the the actual gameplay to get a good feel for it and and maybe it was the distraction of all the other people there trying to post stuff on social media all the different things going on but it felt like it was harder to see some of the gameplay like you just felt like the peripheral was just like overloaded with stuff could be and it's just you know you're sitting for if we were sitting decent we had really good seats but we weren't so close that the TVs felt like they were kind of up in your face. And again, if you're using a TV where everything is right there, it's like, Oh, I can, I can watch all of this, catch all the details. It didn't feel like we had a lot of opportunities to catch the details. But again, do you have, do you have monitors and TVs with like super thin sidings? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's Just probably boiled. it I, ha- I have two yeah. uh my work computer has a 30 is a 32 inch curved and my home computer's 32 inch curved yeah so <laughs> i i am You're spoiled used to feeling immersed <laughs> yeah <laughs> in the uh in whatever you're watching in the games now obviously you know didn't get that but at the same point the immersion of being in the crowd as everyone reacted as everyone felt those big moments that was super cool. Uh, being able to enjoy uh, I, the last time I remember feeling similarly, which the show was much like it was top tier was, I believe it was PlayStation's 2016 show where they showed off God of war and then announced Spider-Man and showed her eyes and they showed all these things. And I got to do one of the theater experiences. Everybody was freaking out in the theater. Because, I mean, that was one of the best presentations Sony's ever done. Um, here, it was it was still a lot of really cool reaction. Like, Mortal Kombat, I know we're about to talk about that. God, some, people were so pumped listening to hey, that. You can hear it. Uh, you can people, hear it online. <laughs> people lost it when Nick Cage came across the stage. And, of course, uh, you know, the, the bi- this, what got the biggest ovation of all was Fortnite. Because I mean, new season, man. I'm, I'm, being, fac- I'm being, faci- <laughs> <laughs> being a bit facetious there, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it was I wasn't there for that one. <laughs> it was really cool to get to see just everything and just the industry get together. Uh, I know that uh, 
Stephen Totillo, I was looking at his Twitter and he was kind of talking about how, you know, this is kind of a see if the industry can, you know, people want to come and pay for an E3 like experience and show. And it was like, well, you know, they started these tickets out at 50 and now they're 10 and, and they didn't sell out the, the bottom of the theater and stuff. And I'm just kind of sitting there thinking like, well, it is a work day and not everyone is, is in LA. PM. Yeah. Not everyone is in LA and you're also looking at this in the sense of this is just a two hour show. This isn't, we go to booths and we play it or anything like that. Like you're paying to go see something in person that a lot of people are used to going and doing on YouTube. I, I can't go in person and, and play a demo. You know, it, it, if I, I would be willing to pay and go somewhere, play a demo, but when it's, Oh, I got to pay 50 bucks just to sit in a somewhat comfy seat and watch you announce things compared to, <laughs> just sitting at home and watching it, I can at least understand why the casual person or the person who's interested in an E3 like event wouldn't want to spend a huge chunk of money to go to, to this specifically. It's, it's the extras is the reason a lot of people go. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you on that. I think, but I think Steven Totilla does have a point in oh, the yeah. sense of what's the justification for of an event like this. And well, especially opening it to the public. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, that's kind of the issue E3 has the whole opening to the public type of thing. Now, Summer Game Fest it is starting out as not something that's quite for press, not something that's quite for. Uh, uh, the casual person either. Um, I just think I don't know if Jeff Keeley knows what this is yet in terms of like who who is he actually catering to because he has to make the developers happy too. Yep. You don't want to open it up to the press and then I'm sorry, not the press, the the, the casual person, and it becomes a. Uh, just a crap show for developers because you got all yep. these people wanting to play demos and all that and whatnot. But, but at the same time, perhaps it is also uh, you can you you know, I, I, I assume Jeff Keeley is probably not making the amount of money that he hoped he would. Cause he has to sell the <clears throat> tickets for $10. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, I still think it's a, it's a learning experience and one where it's like, okay, how do I how do I market this event to be this the the next version of E3, and it, it, it's profitable uh, fairly, um, and I think what this will ultimately become is a carnival, where you kind of convince the developers like, hey, you know this is this this isn't for people who have like not much to show like in terms of like out there on the floor with demos and things like that. This is if you want to show something and you have the ability to make a demo, like you're going to want to be here and people yeah. are going to want to line up and wait to play your stuff. And that's what, that's what sells for the, the, the people like us, the, the casuals, whatever the case may be. And you kind of set it up like a carnival, like, Hey, you pay for this. You get to have access to the theater for the two hours and then, you know, whatever, maybe, maybe it pays for the theater and a day and then you could pay, you know, an, another extra whatever for the second day and, you know, for even more access to different things. And, and it's, so it's kind of like a carnival festival type of thing. And I think that's the easier sell than trying to make it sound like this huge, like, mix of press and consumer events yeah. like E3 is trying to balance because that's what originally E3 was and E3 is having a hard time shaking that foundation. Yeah. So Keely not having a a great foundation in terms of what this thing is besides a summer game fest. <laughs> like lean into the fest. Yep. Festival. It's a carnival. Yeah. Well yeah, and now festival. and and this was the first real live 
yes. showing for Summer Game Fest. So, you know, you got a bunch of kinks to work out and figure like you said, you got to have you got to have data to be able to figure this out. It, I think I forget who it was that I heard this saying from, but you can't measure what you can't manage or you can't manage what you can't, what you can't measure. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. now he mm-hmm. has some data to kind of go with on where he wants to go with this now that because because last year what he did was very very small like the the play days stuff that he did with only press and uh the the i don't even think the show was actually live i think he still did the show on his own without press and yeah i think so and just invited the press to the play days so It'll be it'll be interesting. I think if there's somebody, anybody out there that can figure it out, it's it's going to be him because he's managed to continue to grow this thing. Uh, I was looking. Somebody said he the show averaged around four hundred thousand people watching on YouTube. That's not bad so, for the middle of the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, on a weekday. Yeah, it, it, exactly. I mean, that's uh, the, you know, and he's con- he's convincing companies to bring big things here. Like, well, we're mm-hmm. again, we're going to get in the discussion, but. We saw some like really big announcements, including one that was somewhat unexpected to have been taken. And all I could think was, "Is man, Jeff, you wrote that contract? Nice." <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he's got somebody on his team helping him out real good. Yeah, but uh, but as far as experience goes, uh, super cool, and just cannot wait to get in the middle of the games. Like definitely. What were you gonna say, Noah? I was just gonna, like kind of like what David touched on because I heard him talking. It was like, like one of his like Twitter Space interviews. Like he wants it to evolve and change, and so I think that he's got a really good mindset, you know, to push this to the next level. Like he, he's not just one that is like I hate to use the term like stagnant. Like he he wants it to be the best show and surpass E three in every way. I, I think is his end goal. Um, and as long as I think that, you know, he keeps putting these good shows, you know, if you put the product out there and it's a good product, people, you know, I think he will want to go see it and be there if he makes it, like you said, an experience. Like, I think yep. that adds to it, like, give them a reason to want to be there live versus watching it on YouTube. And I think him bringing in like celebrities and stuff like oh who's he gonna bring this year i think that also like really helps elevate like the intrigue yeah you want to be there i i think it goes back to one of the things that i mentioned before is i i think on the money side if if you don't open this up more then having exclusive summer game fest merch can really like it. and when i'm talking that i don't mean just t-shirts i'm talking you know exclusive we made a hundred statues of this specific character from the like like imagine if there was a hundred in that e3 idea and bringing it over yeah, to summer uh, it, exa- <laughs> it, it's it's it works though because the idea is just that you take you know if you're announcing mortal Kombat and it's like hey we've got a johnny cage as like we found out that Jean Claude Van Damme is voicing Johnny. Like, do a Johnny Cage, Jean Claude Van Damme like outfit in a that kind of an outfit or something, and sell it. You know, limit to this many. Uh, <laughs> again, you may not sell everything, but I'm sure there's a huge a market for all of those. Yeah, you, you can, have you to can, look at how many people are coming and yep. you know how much you would need and. And you'd probably, you know, the first couple of years, it's just very limited amount of things. Yep. And, you know, you make sure it sells out. Yep. And you, you, throw one, the rest, you, you throw the rest out. online. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like that's the thing. More. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think even though it was a smaller crowd, I guess, overall, I got, I got that old E3 feeling yep. again. The and excitement. Yeah. It was and that nice was there. to hear That crowd. was there. Yeah, it was nice to hear. I only, like I, I again, I only saw the first two opening stuff, but it was I was like, yeah, I'm um this is this is what I remember, this is what I miss. Um and I want to I want to go to this thing. Um so that's that's a good feeling. The I and I wonder how many other people left that live stream from their couch feeling like their bed 
oh, I want to go to that next year. You know, I like, I want to be there. And I think for Keeley, the next step is, okay, how do we, how do we present this in a way where it's not just, you get the two hours, you get more access yep. to something. And I think, and I think that'll make it palpable for developers too. Because yes, E3 was a paid event as well for consumers, but I feel like this just hits better. And so, well, you didn't People get to go to the shows at all. It was just the show floor. If yeah, you were, if you so, paid, so yeah, so you get access to this kind of, you know, I don't want to say movie like, you know, concert ish type of thing, and you get that for the two hours. The rest of the day, you get to, you know, play some stuff. Nobody gets to play, and yeah, you got to pay for it. But that that's that's the benefit for the developers, right? It's not this free for all of just a bunch of people. There is a paywall there yep. to be able to do that. Well, and obviously and, you uh, limit yeah. the tickets. Sure. Sure. Of course. Um, but the price itself is a limitation. So, you know, yep. I mean, he could go all kinds of way of pricing this thing. You know, if you just want to go to the theater thing, it's 20 bucks. If you just want to go, you know, uh, you know, carnivals and all this, there's all kind of different packages. <laughs> you know, you want yep. the full weekend here, seventy five dollars. You know, whatever the case may be. Um, I just, I think there's a lot of legs to it, and I think if Keeley can even prove to the venue, YouTube Theater, that hey, give us, give us access to a weekend, and we will not disappoint. You know, like instead of a weekday, the middle of the day, middle of the week. <laughs> No, uh, YouTube theater. Give us, give us a weekend. Like, doesn't matter what, because <laughs> I'm sure with YouTube theater, there's probably it's probably more than just who books things first. There's probably a lot of like scheduling, like, you know, who gets what, when, uh, biggest amount of people, things like that. They got to run that as a business. So, if if Keeley can prove that that he could get more people over a weekend and the price is worth it he'll get it. Yep. He will absolutely get it. Well, and like, go back to like the pricing of the tickets. I was thinking like, you know, I, I don't necessarily them dropping it down to $10 as like, oh, it's not, you know, selling. I think it's more of, you know, were they testing the waters? Were they like, hey, let's put this at 50. Let's see how many we sell. And then once they sold the, you know, the max that they were going to, then they decided to drop the price. Um, I would like to see the, you know, the, the final numbers on that. Cause that's, I do, th I do think they were trying to put as many butts and seats as they could just being honest. Exactly. Like, like you sell, you know, the price point that you want to sell that you sell as many as you can that, you know, we'll purchase it at that. Um, and then, you know, then you can drop it to fill seats. You just have to, not let people, you know, let that become a habit. <laughs> so that way people just yeah, wait until say. the last minute and then, you know, exactly. Um, but yeah, that's the you danger know, of that it, it sounds like they're, you know, like we said, testing, evolving, improving. So yeah, I, I, I had fun watching it. Like you said, it was very exciting. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's that whole, like, you know, you want it to be exciting and fun, but you also, it has to make money. So trying to find that perfect balance, I think is a really, is a tough job. <laughs> it's going to be challenging. Definitely. But is. I mean, the game awards has gotten better and better over the years. So Keeley's very good at look. Apparently he's, I, I mean, he's got to be good at looking into data and making adjustments like him and, and, his and team. listening to feedback. Yeah. So uh, he's not afraid to change. He's not afraid to adjust. I think that's a great quality. Great. So he's got a good team behind him. And I expect this to get better. Again, this was, like you said, the first live one. And it didn't go bad. I mean, like he said, nobody was arrested. So <laughs> you start there. Yeah. I, was, I was wondering what the over under on for Bill Clinton kid to show up. So <laughs> <laughs> when they, they had somebody looking at beside him, like, uh. <laughs> they had somebody like looking at a, a picture of him and looking up every once in a while. <laughs> Commit this to memory. <laughs> yeah, right. Wait, it was cool. We did have a uh, Paris Lily sitting close to us. So. Oh, I want to meet that guy one day. Him and uh, Danny Pena, I believe it is. 
They were both yeah, sitting there. Yeah, they were both mm-hmm. sitting right there. So yeah. Yeah, I need to meet that guy one day. Yep. That's my brother from another mother. He don't know it yet. <laughs> <laughs> so right. the video games, what all we what yeah. all got announced, peeps? <laughs> Uh, if, well, you tell us. There, but, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm not looking at the list because of my technical problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got the list here. Um, thank you, Eurogamer, for literally posting everything in order. So, um, so first, obviously, Jeff Keeley took the stage. He was dressed as he t- he looked like he was wearing a Watch Dogs uh, jacket. <laughs> I'll be honest, like tactics. I heard the announce, like the announcer announcing him, and I thought it was just Jeff with a higher pitched voice. Like said he was back there, <laughs> uh, yeah. and here coming in the creator of the Game Awards. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was so I was like, that's how you present him. He's just the creator of the Game Awards. Like he's done so much more for the industry than just that. <laughs> I was like, uh, that, I I I think he would say that. That is his biggest accomplishment. Yeah. But I still yeah. feel like that's a strange way to do it when you are literally also the creator of Summer Game Fest. So, yep. like, not the Game Award and Summer Game Fest. Like, hype that up too, even though you're there. Anyway. Best friend of Hideo Kojima. <laughs> yeah, right. And I hear he's pretty cool. Seriously. Too. Like, he's a cool guy. Um. <laughs> uh, so, the first thing they showed was uh, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. I don't think anybody expected this to be the not opener at all and it actually looks super cool it looks really good <clears throat> i uh, i like side scroller action type of stuff and the, what i thought was as i was watching it i was like this is how do you utilize the 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 technology we have now you don't have to create something super bombastic crazy uh watchdogs legion or you know whatever other games that really try to push the boundaries of the the consoles nah you can make a game like prince of persia the lost crown and that game looks uh fluid smooth and beautiful and it doesn't even i can't imagine it maxes out you know the the potential of the console but it, it it maximizes everything it wants to do because it's not trying to do so much push the power and all that it just looks beautiful you don't have to push boundaries just perfect the craft like (laughs) yeah but sometimes you know certain developers they just want to i won't say they just want to they have reasons for doing it um but they want to eke out every inch of what the hardware can do and Sometimes it works out. Sometimes it, God of War looks absolutely fascinating and beautiful and it looks great. Um, but this, the animations, the way it looks like it's going to cut between gameplay and cutscenes without having to uh, come out of like an engine or go into FMV type of stuff. I mean, that's possible because of the current hardware. And they're not overdoing it. They're using what they need. They have the artistic style. I think that fits, which I was kind of fascinated. I was like, oh, yeah, this doesn't look super realistic like the original Prince of Persia. They went with a more, uh, I guess, I don't even know how to describe it. I guess a more Overwatchy type of yeah. style. Um, that's not even the most accurate. Um Maybe Sifu, I guess, would be more accurate. But it looks great. <laughs> What's funny is they announced a Prince of Persia remake years ago, and this is going to be announced and come out before that well, thing ever does. So, so when I was watching it, um, <laughs> me and the person uh, that I was watching were like, did the did the remake get delayed so long it became a new game? Like, oh, bro, <laughs> the, did it get a glow up? Like, uh, bro, the, the the remake is getting remade. That's what's happening right now. <laughs> it became a new game. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, um, cool. Even just some of the sequences that they were showing uh, with the platforming. There, there was a couple the of looks. Way- I was like, "That's a QTE." <laughs> admittedly well yeah 
<laughs> there were some moments where you're jumping through and the way the there were like these pendulums like swinging into the foreground um and you're like jumping through them like the way it was like messing with the dimensional space it i was like oh that's actually a really interesting way to do some platforming where it's like messing with your vision in the foreground um you don't see that very often so it looks like they're trying some different things so yeah i, I am definitely looking forward to it and it's coming out january 18th 2024 yep, so, around the corner yep, very yeah well, halfway down the block but yeah not not too far and this doesn't look like it's uh, like a game that's going to be delayed so we don't have to <laughs> i don't think we have to worry about <laughs> that next was mortal Kombat, and yeah, boy what a what a trailer <laughs> <laughs> that the the original trailer the cg trailer was so like it was one of those you just kind of half close put your hands over your eyes and you peek between your fingers because you're like this is just nasty <laughs> i mean it was brutal and gory and the gameplay looks exactly the same like it's it is just filthy <laughs> the things that are happening as these fighters are on there and my goodness it's pretty like it it is just like when when you're watching some of those cutscenes it's like just it it, it i i was telling ron today and this will kind of come up later i was like i remember playing watching final fantasy advent children i'm like we're now playing Final Fantasy Advent Children, what it looks like. And oh, that's yeah. that's what Mortal Kombat is. Like it's like, oh my goodness, this is just so real looking. <laughs> so it's uh can't yeah, wait to I get think that. That's how you do a gameplay reveal. Like is just buttery smooth and like you said, brutal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't get any more brutal than what we watched. <laughs> So yeah, fatalities were insane. <laughs> Dude, the, the way they ended it with yeah, all the different funny. fatalities, I was like, ah, oh, <laughs> that's what the crowd was like, doing. Oh. <laughs> like, hey. Is he okay? Like, like <laughs> when it got to the one on. where like he stopped the saw in midair and then like smashed oh. his face, I was like, ah. <laughs> well, I cringed before I was. Once the saw was there, I was like, no. Nah. <laughs> well then like, oh. Raiden like comes up and electrify like electrifies a hole through a dude comes up through it uh, sh electrifies him apart and then proceeds to grab the parts and smash them together it's like when does this end that is such a <laughs> chad move though to like you know, oh yeah put a, a huge <laughs> hole through the you know the stomach of your opponent they're already dead and then he comes yep. floating through and just like wow. <laughs> and that's not enough he's gotta he's desecrates gonna the remains yeah Nothing. and then of yeah, course the one the, where he like peeled his face off the oh, floor God. and i was like dude like what is this <laughs> his face is so smashed into the ground yet to still peel him off oh my goodness and, and then of course the classic ones that we got to see with like scorpion ripping the spine out like yeah, just damn just just yeah, that good was like, that was brutal too yep i i want to know I just I need to meet the developers because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, who are you guys to be? And watch to them watch the entire team be the most like mild mannered, soft spoken, <laughs> like very passive like group of people, but they come up with like these crazy <laughs> brutalities and stuff. Like, <laughs> he hello, we're about to show you Mortal Kombat <laughs> yeah. today. <laughs> Over here sounded like Michael Jackson. <laughs> hello. hello. <laughs> Like, <laughs> we appreciate you being here today. We want to show off this new game that we've been playing. Like the most shy, you know, socially awkward people. They're just like no, socially like awkward. Like, socially awkward also works with serial killers, so maybe not socially yeah. awkward. <laughs> I mean, have you seen yeah, the game is. they made? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> as far as the actual fighting goes. That looks like the combos that they were pulling off with the uh, tag teaming stuff was was cool. But I I f I figured that this is what it was going to be. Nothing special, just tag team. It was okay. Yeah, character yeah. comes in, does a little thing, and they 
they run out or and hop it's out. limited obviously by a meter yeah. or so it's like the cameo yeah, fighter so, with a k yeah so i wasn't i get at first i was like okay yeah i guess maybe i was expecting too much i was expecting something more um uh, novel with the thing for mortal Kombat. it wasn't that but the way everything combos together uh, really cool real mm-hmm. nice the fact that you can use like them at any point in a combo the, with the cameos you can use them at any point to continue your combo uh some of the different moves that we were watching were real like scorpion with his constant using the the chain spike in midair <laughs> and all that yeah. was just ah. Oh. Like it, like you said, it just flows so well, and I know that I'm not going to flow it all that well because all I'm going to do is keep hitting one button and doing this the whole time. Uppercut, yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, ah, it's it's just nice to see what the power of gaming consoles come. Is it like we just talked about that with Prince of Persia? It's not that it has to be this push the boundaries 200 hour game but man if you can make it buttery smooth and work yeah. which which is actually what matters in a fighting game is that it's smooth <laughs> so yeah, yeah it, it just looks fun and then it was neat that they got a hold of uh, jean-claude van damme <laughs> to do the voice of johnny cage i uh i think uh this mortal Kombat feels strangely closer to marvel versus capcom in in style not not because of the tag teaming stuff but how fast it is and and how many combos it looks like you can pull off like it it, mortal kombat the the, at least the last trilogy version of it it was fast it was smooth it was it was all these things but this feels like a different level that i hadn't seen before in, in the previous mortal kombat's like there still seemed to be, for lack of a better way to put it, a, a chess likeness to the previous trilogy. Not quite as slow as Street Fighter more and that tactical. methodical. But yes, more tactical. This, well, I, it's a fighting game. There's going to be tactics to it for sure. But it, it feels more bombastic and uh, flashy. Free flowing. Like a yeah, flashy, thank you. Like Marvel versus Capcom, which. It doesn't feel out of place. Yeah, I think there'll be like, um, I'm curious to see like once people get their, you know, demos to get to play it, to try it out, you know, to see like how much, you know, how much it adds to, I guess, this game's style of combat with the cameo system, like how integral, you know, will that be in establishing the different levels of skill? Like, is that something that they base the game around, you know, um, to make it be part of the foundation or is it just something that like, yeah, it's there, you know, that you can use. So now that you say that, that is probably why they went in the direction that they've, that they've gone in terms of flashiness and the amount of hits you can probably get before, you know, uh, uh, um your opponent can react because of the tag system um i think if you would have had a tag system with the way the previous mortal Kombat games were i'm not sure it would work as well um just because the way the combos end up uh there is a i mean you look at some of those combos in the video i mean they strong for a while um they're fast and flashy but they also went for a while like more than your typical mortal Mm -hmm. Kombat combo so i think that's the direction they want to go they balance how much damage you take and all that stuff i'm sure but i just now that you say that i think that is the reason why it looks the way it does in terms of it's intentional and yeah it's an intentional yeah design yeah yeah and i think that is because of the 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 tag team mechanic um so i don't think i don't think it's just i don't think it's just there i think Mm -hmm. it's going to be very intentional um and you know you could use it 
in a variety. You probably use it defensively. You could use it offensively. You mm-hmm. can use it as keep away. You can, you know, you'll probably be able to do all those things um, if they do it right. And, you know, and I'm sitting here thinking about they're calling this one because it's kind of a reboot, you know, of that landscape, you know, after the events. And so it just, it makes sense with a reboot to have a new system in place, you know, or a new style, sure. I guess. So, um, yeah, that, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> so. Agreed. All right. Um, well, after that. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Oh, go ahead. Uh, go I ahead. just want to, because I, you know, for those listeners who know, um, they did announce if you pre-order it, you do get Shang Tsung as a in-game character. And for PlayStation 5 and Xbox users, uh, there is a beta for pre-ordering. Hmm. So, nice. Um, and also, apparently, unless I read it wrong, I believe. Let me just double check myself. And did I see it right that it's coming out for the Switch? <laughs> yes. I'm assuming yes. they have yeah. another studio handling that version, yeah, to be honest with you. So, yeah, those Switch users will not get access to the beta. It is exclusive to PS5 and Series X and S users. It's okay. They'll be able to, you know, chuck their Switches after losing a match <laughs> soon enough. Yep. Uh, Mortal Kombat 1 is coming out September 19th. Very close. Yep. Yep. <laughs> that is around the corner. Yep. Three days after my birthday, just so you two know. Oh, there you go. Uh, one month and six days after mine. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. So Mortal Kombat. I'm really looking forward to that. They then announced Path of Exile 2. Which, fittingly, Diablo 4 has come out. Now, all of a sudden, boom! Path of Exile 2. ARPGs in the conversation. I have not played Path of Exile. It is a game I want to play. It is a game I am aware of. I am aware of its systems. I saw this trailer, and I thought, I want to play Path of Exile. I should <laughs> I should go do that before this comes out, because I, I want to play this. So, uh, I think this is perfect timing for them to have oh, uh, man. put this what out. A, what a good timing when everyone's looking at that style. Yep. <laughs> yeah, the the ARPG is in right now with Diablo 4, so this is perfect timing. Uh, this is great marketing timing. So, um, and it looks good. The one the one thing I took away from the trailer is it obviously looked like a scripted event. You had your it looked like a sorcerer uh, moving through a linear path in a dungeon and they're holding off hordes of enemies coming to them and then as they move on all of a sudden this looks like a boss just like bust through the walls and then the trailer ends and that got me thinking that is something diablo could use where there's like a dynamic event that happens in a dungeon that's not quite like a public event like in destiny or something or what's currently happening in diablo 4 where you have these uh, kind of events that do happen in dungeons that are very specific and kind of randomized, but instead almost, almost like a scripted, like uh, just like boom boss. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Oh, frick, this just busted through the walls. Something like that. Um, I think, I think that's a really nice touch. If they, if they have different things like that in dungeons where, especially if it's your first time in a dungeon and something like that happens, it's like, Oh crap, I was not ready for this. So if that is a, uh, precursor to what path of exile two is going to bring, uh, I, I am in, I want to be in my menu and just hear a boss crash through the wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see it. You just hear the audio cue because you're in your menu. Like, oh crap! <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's a, already a thing in Path of Exile, oh. but if it's not, it looks like it's going to be in two. So the real yeah, jump scare. Yeah, yeah, I got ideas. <laughs> yeah. Did you? Did any of you play Path of Exile? I didn't. <laughs> oh, and okay. like I said, I'm really excited. It's just when is it? Come, did they give a date? I cannot remember. I don't think uh, they did. Uh, uh, wait, time out. If you're a Path of Exile fan, then put July 18th in your diary. Thanks oh, to your goodness. July 18th. Good Lord. Okay, I need well, to that mark that in my calendar now. <laughs> and that, news will be that is even like you're already turning the corner. Yeah. That's how close that is. I've got to get their Diablo goodness, quick. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> 
Goodness gracious. All right. Well, I'm going to write that down. Um, in the meantime, let me... All right, let's move on. Uh, I guess there will be a collaboration between Street Fighter Six and Exoprimal. Which, right? which was just... I, w- I was like, well, Mecha Ryu? Mm-hmm. What? Yeah, and then I saw the... <laughs> I was like, he's fighting a... Dino, like dinosaurs drew my attention. I was like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then I got to, I put two and two together, like a <laughs> crossover. Man, a new IP though. Like, oh. huh? Capcom's been on a roll, so you can imagine that it's probably going to be good. It sounds like it's an event too, like not just like skin crossovers, you know? So I'm very curious because it's in the autumn. So it's a little bit down the road. Yeah, quite possibly. We'll see. Um, I guess it's going to be a limited thing. And then, as the mother David of all thought, crossovers, <laughs> he's like, if you, Jeff, literally, you know, when he was like, if you thought, you know, Ryu and dinosaurs, just wait. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, and then uh, David was uh, starstruck once. Mr. Nicholas Cage himself strutted onto the stage and made an appearance for <laughs> Dead <idol>. by <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I just really want to steal the Constitution. <laughs> That's why David aced all of his history lessons. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't expect Nicolas Cage to talk about Dead by Daylight. David, can you explain this? What happened? I, I don't remember a lot because it was more the, oh my gosh, Nicolas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, he's a character that's in Dead by Daylight, and he does a lot of, he, he has a lot of really neat little things that he says, I guess, as he's doing all kinds of different stuff and whatnot, and... Like so he is actually a playable character. He he actually was a part of the like he actually did mocap and everything. It sounds like oh, uh, he's so, a survivor, correct? I believe so. Yeah, like he got invited to do some movie or something, and everything goes wrong. <laughs> so there's even a little bit. But it, the cool thing is just he was like super genuine up there. It didn't look like anything he was doing was forced or that he was on a script or anything. Like it, it actually felt like he was excited to be doing something in video games. Uh, Cause he was even talking about how much different it is with the movements and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So like it was, it was really neat, really neat just cause uh, you get the feeling that was a new experience for him. And for somebody like Nicholas cage, he doesn't really get a lot of those at this point, I would assume. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, he's, he's done everything. <laughs> yeah. So I wonder if he really appreciated the challenge of trying to, and, to uh, mocap with video games <laughs> cyberpunk's second expansion nicholas cage <laughs> he gets a Bro, taste for it started. <laughs> don't get me started okay um but yeah oh he also said like you're talking about being genuine he's you know one of, one of if not his favorite movie genre is horror so like this was a perfect <laughs> like you know collab i guess at this point for him all right He'll be arriving July 25th. So you only got a week to play Path of Exiles before switching (laughs) over. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. All right. And then uh, I guess, you know, video games cannot just stay video games. You got to have something from Netflix. So Jeff Keighley also had a trailer for the third season of The Witcher. That was a well, thing. The first part of the third season of The Witcher, <laughs> yeah. I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have that. no opinion. It looked nice. It was bloody. I, it was. I'm petty because <laughs> I, I am sad that it's his final season. So I'll be okay, I guess. Well, there was a trailer for Witchfire directly after that. Now that looks really good. Really fun. I agree. It does. I can't tell what kind of game. It looks like a looter shooter. Um, I don't believe it is. I think it's just a straightforward shooter, like kind of doomy. Yeah, that's a better description. Which, which yes. it's the people who do. Um, it's people who did the Bulletstorm that were involved in Bulletstorm at one point. So, well, okay, so that I'm thank you for bringing that up because that is one of the things that <laughs> threw me when they. 
uh, launched that trailer. Um, I'm currently getting through an ad right now so I can remember all the credits <laughs> that were there. Yeah, I think uh, there were so two that can... made sense and one that was like, huh? <laughs> yeah. And that's what I need to talk about. Hold on. I'm almost there. Um, oh, I think I accidentally skipped it. I don't know. Oh, no. but, oh yes. Here we go. From the creators of The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. That, that was what Kane it was. Killer, and bullet store because it's like and okay. i thought to myself <laughs> wow <laughs> two of these one of these things is not like the others <laughs> yeah because i was like because because I, I read the vanishing of ethan carter first and i'm like oh okay okay then i read the other two I'm like huh <laughs> wait, wait 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 yeah and then i saw what it was i'm like oh we had an embargo about this i know what this is <laughs> But the cop, I, you know, it's one of those things where you see that kind of stuff and you think you, 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 from the creators of thing that is like this thing. So bullet storm is probably the closest. I've, I don't even know what painkiller is, but it's, it's um, a shooter that it would kind of fit in that genre. So I imagine, but also the vanishing of, so I'm thinking, I see that. And before we get into the shooting, I'm thinking, okay, so this is probably a deep story based shooter. Okay. And then you see everything that you see. I'm like, there doesn't seem anything deep story ish yep. thoughtful about this. This looks like uh, just a plain out fun shooter. And it looks like a lot of fun. It's but, pretty uh, too. Like, that's one thing that I automatically saw is like, it's crisp. Pretty. And then yeah. I read that um, the astronauts, the devs, that is a team uh, of yes. 10 devs. Oh my like, goodness! Wow! Like yeah, they're the ones who created the vanishing of Ethan Carter. Um, hence that <laughs> like, <laughs> credit. That is, and then they brought and then they brought on, I guess, other people from People Can Fly, and a, yeah. a, a, must be the some people from the Painkiller team. Like that is props to them. Which is why I was confused. I was like, who made this until the end? <laughs> the end credits. I saw the astronauts. I was like, oh, this okay. This out. This is not what I expected <laughs> from them. Okay. I knew they were branching off into something different other than kind of story based games. I just didn't know that it was this. So good on them. I don't know. It looks interesting. Like I said, do me. Yeah. And that one's September 20th, I believe, or somewhere around there. Yes. September 20th. Um, Well, it releases to early access. So yes. Yes. Early access, September 20th. Yes. Uh, All right. Then after that, we had. PSVR 2 game, Crossfire Sierra Squad, uh, which that was shown at the PlayStation Showcase, wasn't it? It was. It, that looks better than, you know, actual, like, Crossfire X, so. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Thank God for that. Uh, it's coming in August. Don't have a date specifically, but it is coming in August. Not nice that PlayStation VR continues to attract some different games, so. Yes. Then we saw something about Remnant 2. Which I think that was almost more... I didn't know if that was even like a commercial (laughs) or if it was like a... like just a reveal. (laughs) Like I'll be honest, I had no idea which one it was. I don't remember this game being announced at all. It was Um, announced last year, I think. That's why I don't remember. (laughs) Yep. Was it during Summer Game Fest? It, it was either Summer Game Fest or it was Opening Night Live, uh, uh, okay. Gamescom. So it was one of them. Yeah, last year I didn't get to watch much of either uh, of those. But I remember the first. I remember liking out. the first game. Was it just a shooter? Uh, it's got r- roguelike elements in it, I believe. Okay. But it, the first one was actually neat, really neat looking, and like I, I think I probably got it on Epic Store or something. But it was a. Uh, it kind of trying to remember the way the shooter was set up, the the vibes it kind of gave. But I, I liked it. it. It really felt like a, like a ro- regular roguelike because it had kind of the dive roll. But since it's a shooter, it's obviously feels a little bit different. For remnant, well, fans, it comes out is July twenty fifth. For remnant oh, fans, I will no. be excited. <laughs> this is a game for remnant fans. <laughs> so ain't nothing wrong with that. Uh, July 25th is when it comes out. Another one right around the corner. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And then Sonic Superstars. 
came after that. Anybody excited for that? Looks really cool. I mean, if you're a classic Sonic fan, this looks like it's going to be right up your alley. Uh, yeah, Sonic. I know Sonic Mania did really, really well, and Sonic Mania is so go, good. going back to that that old school style, but making it look nicer obviously does a lot but man there's like just some of the different gameplay and power kind of things that it, it's cool that you can take a game that is as frantic of a pace that you feel is in sonic but inject some of these abilities and still keep that frantic pace mm. but some and, so, and just the ways some of the levels like he was busting the blocks and everything was just rotating and yeah. stuff and i was like that's that to me is a sonic level like it, it, it seems add <laughs> to, to, to say so like I, i'm not a big sonic fan but I, i'm sure i'm looking forward to to getting to try that one out i saw when i was watching the trailer i saw some elements i don't remember specifically which ones but i thought they they look like they took some inspiration out of Mario 3 for <laughs> some of this stuff, um, which would be weird for Sonic, but I saw it. If I had the trailer in front of me, I'd be able to point it out to you. But Not a bad game to there, copy. <laughs> no, there were, there were definitely two instances, though, where I felt like that looks definitely inspired by Super Mario Bros. 3, um, which I think it is interesting because they do take it looks like they're they're going in a lot of different directions with this uh you know different camera angles it's not just 2d side scrolling um not that it gets into like sonic frontiers level of three dimension but it's it's not strictly in that you're just staring at the character from the uh two-dimensional aspect i'm i'm gonna buy it <laughs> and the fact that it's co-op four player yeah mm-hmm. yeah i can play really nice. i can hopefully be able to play couch co-op with my wife she loves sonic so this game will be i would, perfect I would for imagine her. you should be able to i would think so too the i actually look forward to the idea of being able to play with other people online because one of the issues with sonic 2 originally being co-op was somebody would get super far ahead and then like the game would have to like catch you up and like <laughs> uh this even the split screen stuff was kind of weird so uh if you're playing with somebody online like you just have your own screen and everybody's just doing a thing so <laughs> um that'll that'll probably be a lot better but i like the fact that Sega seems to understand there are people who like original Sonic style and there are people who do like the three-dimensional Sonic. So give the people both. Yep. Yeah, Sonic Frontiers, which actually seemed to do pretty well. I didn't get to play it, but people seem to like it. It seemed to uh, play better than it looked. And now you have this. So... um, um. And from what Sonic I'm, Superstars. What I'm seeing, it says will offer local four player co op. So great. Hmm. Fantastic. I hope it's online too. That would be good. I hope so. After that, Noah's game came uh yes, was Honkai Star Rail. Yes, sir. <laughs> yep. Coming to the PS5. Yep. yep. Uh I wonder Q4. how much I'll have to drop to get the platinum for it. <laughs> <laughs> Gotcha. So that, <laughs> oh, and Sonic, by the way, is coming out sometime in the fall. Don't know yet when. And uh, Honkai is coming out sometime in Q4. Q4. Mm-hmm. And then another game that is coming out September 19th that people have been excited about and wanted to see more of. Lies of P. I know you guys got something to say about that. Well, we actually, cool enough, if you go and check it out, we have demo impressions on Gaming Trend because we got a hold of the demo early, as well as our own Richard Allen fully captured the entirety of the demo. So you have several. He's got the first 21 minutes, the entire demo, and then he's got some other stuff on there. So definitely go check it out. He absolutely loves it. It is tough. 
Uh, it's got that kind of bloodborne kind of mix in. It's not as hard as from what he said as every other souls like, but it's still tough. So I don't know if that is the, he's a souls born veteran. So <laughs> it's, it's easier for him because I've also heard people who've said that it's just stupid hard. Uh, and that could be just their inexperience with it. But, uh, there, to me, when you've got a demo out, there's no reason not to go try it. Cause it, the game looks gorgeous. Like, I mean, it, it, I, I love, that's one of the reasons I really loved steel rising is because it just had such a unique look to it. And Lies of P has that really unique look to it. Just that, that I don't see this everywhere kind of thing. It's like, I, I know looking at it, it's a dark souls, a soulsy game, but it still looks so unique. It's, it's, it's just that funny thing of somehow people are finding new ways to make this kind of game, even if it's almost the exact same. It's, I mean, technically FromSoft has been doing that for a while now. <laughs> they keep taking the same game and finding a way to shift it in order to make it feel fresh and new again. And it's, that's really cool. And I'm glad that a team like this is being able to do it. So uh, thanks a lot for packing September again, <laughs> video game companies uh, that and October look absolutely terrible in terms of the time I will actually have uh, when I'm not going to the restroom. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <basically. laughs> After that, we got a, look at Sandland, an announcement trailer, a game uh, developed by Bandai Namco. Noah, I'm pretty sure you um, got some thoughts on this. Surprisingly, no, I'm intrigued by the game itself. Um, I know Bandai is publishing it. So I believe it's I let me see where I have my notes on it. Uh, let's see. It's developed by ILCA Inc. Um, they're actually the ones oh. behind it. Uh, ben they, I, they just did a. It. They just did One Piece Odyssey. Oh, so then I'll, I mean, oh, I'll, cool. I, I'm not familiar with <laughs> the um, source material because I'm not the biggest Dragon Ball fan. Um, but yeah, Kira Toriyama. Yep, it's based off uh, of his uh, series. So knowing my old boss, Matt, I sent him a picture of the, uh, the name Sandland to which he responded Anakin's favorite video game <laughs> in response to Anakin everywhere. Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and I talked about it in the news piece that uh, I got up Bandai generally does a really good job with putting good dev teams with the right franchises that work. Um, so I expect this to be a solid uh, entry. No release date, um, just more of an announcement that it's in development. Yeah, ILCA, they're okay. They did okay with One Piece. Um, it was that wasn't a mind blowing game, but it, it it was it was fun. So I'm curious to know. Before all, they've pretty much done is other stuff for developers that have not necessarily been development up until uh, shining uh, the, the remakes of diamond and pearl. Um, I can't remember uh, shining pearl or whatever it is. Uh, Brilliant diamond. There it is. And shining pearl, I believe. So, and then they did one piece odyssey. Like that was their first like full game, no source material, like to base it off of other than just, one piece they need to create a game so uh the first game wasn't a bust for sure uh but it also was a fantastic so i'm curious to know where they're going to go with this and uh honestly what kind of game it they're, will be they're saying action rpg so i'm um, because then that's completely okay set, you know a unique different you know genre or combat system than a uh, one piece so yeah I, I'm curious. I definitely want to see like some gameplay, maybe get a demo up whenever they're ready for that to roll through. Yeah, this is going to be their first game that is theirs. Like, no, nothing before it, you know? It's not like Sandland is an anime or something before it. Like, this is uh, an original creation. So, 
I I wish ILCA all the luck in, in getting this done and making it awesome. I think they could do it. Uh, I guess there will be an Annapurna interactive showcase on the 29th of June. That is a thing. Yep. We like Annapurna. Yeah. There should be some really cool things shown off there. I lo- they have a lot of really good, they have a lot of unique indie games that they tend to put their money behind. So definitely they, looking forward to seeing what they do. I when saw, you put Annapurna and Devolver together, you get some interesting just <laughs> <laughs> indie games across the spectrum. Oh, yeah. I, I'm just excited because at the very beginning of the trailer, I got a glimpse of Stray. So I'm very curious to see, you know, what, you know, more that entails. <laughs> get it? I said entails because it's a cat. Yeah, it mm. so. <laughs> What's next? Throne and Liberty. This is an <clears throat> upcoming title from NC Soft and oh wow, I just read that. Amazon. Amazon is back of the picture, not an MMO. <laughs> so uh yeah, Throne and Liberty. I haven't seen the trailer for this. This is a world premiere. So what are your thoughts on it? I I'll be honest, I think it was uh, I thought it was an MMO. <laughs> is it so, an MMO? I think oh it my is. Gosh. Yeah. Oh, good lord, Amazon. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm not surprised if it is. It, 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 I, does, if I'm remembering right, it looked like one. How does it, one publisher release so many games within the same genre? The same genre. Yeah, it de- <laughs> like we we see the problem with live services right now, where there's so many of them, people don't have time to play all of them, and Amazon themselves are making so many MMOs. Like you're just trying to hit every audience on the planet. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> what are you doing? Goodness gracious. Uh, are are you looking that up, Noah? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to. I, I just rewatched, you know, pieces of the trailer to like, you know, remind myself. And I forgot the part where the homie just like jumps up and transforms into a bird. <laughs> okay. Inspired by Chia. Uh, transform in anything okay well after that throne in liberty came a trailer from nexon for a game that's coming in the fall and it's called Warhaven. i do not know what this is what is it it is east if i'm putting together the right game yeah it basically it's a online like pvp uh, it's being described as a 16 v 16 medieval brawler. So okay. with fantasy elements, so it's going to have like steel, you know, sword axe gameplay mixed with some magical abilities and elements. Um, and it, from what it looks like, there is also going to be like some either PB elements where like you have some minions you know uh some mm. bad generic okay. guys or the guy in the trailer just took out like five people in one swing <laughs> <laughs> like i i'm hoping that that is the the case that they're just as because there's a lot of people on this screen i guess um, maybe it's kind of a for honor kind of style like it uh, looked pretty it's very pretty but like with much bigger scale and less i don't know if it definitely seems like it's not going to have as much like countering as how for honor did you know with the defense and stuff it might just be uh you know light attacks heavy attacks of that nature um but if you're curious to see how it plays those who are interested it will be um i believe a demo will be available during steam next fest which is between june 19th and 26th so you can try it out and tell us how wrong we are (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> there's a recent game that came out uh, i think in march february or march called warlander and that's kind of like this big old like pvp game where you're trying to take over everybody's trying to take over the other person's base and it's set in medieval type of stuff so there's cannons and just swords and mages and uh, what's those little things that bust down the doors of, of castle gates and stuff? Those those rams and whatnot. So, yeah. uh, battering rams. So, 
I don't know. It was interesting. It was it was made by the creators of Happy Wars, uh, which I actually like that game a lot. And so this sounds like that a little bit. This sound Warhaven sounds something the similar to Warlander. The biggest thing that intrigues me is the sixteen B sixteen. Yeah, because it you know because in my mind I'm thinking kind of like an online multiplayer where you have like respawns. Like if they have different game modes like a no respawn mode or like a domination style game mode or something. I think that could be pretty fun, especially if it plays really well. Um, and, you know, getting a bunch of friends together to go being fantasy medieval knights. Uh, it could be a fun time. I, I'm very curious and want to uh, try out the demo. Then we got a trailer for Party Animals. This is coming out on September 20th. Uh, I see an Xbox trailer, so I don't know if that, that was an Xbox trailer, but um, okay, Party Animals. Anybody? Did I've, it look I've fun? just never played it. Uh, I'll be honest, this was the spot in the show where it seemed kind of like a lot of ads were happening, so I was busy checking to, <laughs> and forwarding all the news emails. There you go. <clears throat> I know the feeling. You got you got to get some work done sometimes during these things. Mm-hmm. Then they show Crash Team Rumble, and it's coming out June twentieth. Oh, that is really close. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, I played that game. I did the the closed beta. And it's Anthony fun, did not, not care for it as much. I so. was not. I was not impressed. Here's, here's um, hoping will, the final product, uh, at least for you, ends up being better. Yeah, yeah. I always, I always hope for that. Um, I had some criticism of it but um we'll see what happens when it comes out i will play it we'll be checking it out some more this weekend at uh summer game fest so okay uh i am curious to know your thoughts on it um granted i will have been able to play more but just initial (laughs) thoughts well no i I spent like 12 hours with it so (laughs) i just played it hard over the weekend um so but yeah, curious to know your initial thoughts while you played on a show floor and whatnot. Um, what? Here, oh, I'll do this. What I predict is, I think you'll. I think you're going to have fun with it because I. I do think there is fun in it. I absolutely believe that because it's not like I had a miserable time playing it. I played it for twelve hours. You don't do that if you didn't have no fun with it. I just think in hindsight, I think you'll see some some flaws. So that's my prediction. We'll, we'll see how you feel <laughs> after you play it. Um, oh, I didn't realize this was next on the list. Mm. <laughs> There's this game coming out October 17th. Um, I think Noah heard me over in uh, <laughs> in Tennessee over, over the live stream Sque- squealing. Yeah, I was, I was. Oh no, he didn't need the live stream. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, you know, we were watching. I was like, I can hear Dave, and they're like, ha- "What?" I was like, "No, no, I." You can hear him through the the live stream. No, 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 I can literally hear David. <laughs> did, did you did you really make that joke? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Right. Some raw, unedited gameplay of Alan Wake 2. Those are my favorite kind of trailers. Just, just give me the game. And, and there so, wasn't David, a lot. Go ahead. But there wasn't a lot, but oh my goodness, it looks so good. Like it, it. I did our remaster review, and I've said I've, we've talked about it before. I believe with the PlayStation Showcase and everything like that. It's like you know the remaster looked pretty good, but it definitely was held back by some just, it it felt a little clunky because they didn't really refine a lot. And it was a little bit clunky back then. This looked just, this looked like Alan Wake, but to perfection. (laughs) Like I know, I know that's funny to say, but it looks like, Oh man, they, they took everything that is brand new about video games in this day and age and put it into Alan Wake. And I am so excited just seeing the flashlight burn away the darkness from this person who's possessed and then just 
bro's taken like every bullet until a perfect headshot finally finishes him off. Uh, I, I just want to see more. I want to see more of this game. I want to play this game. I am. I'm just ready for Alan Wake too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> can't top that. No, I can't say anything. <laughs> nope. We then got a trailer for Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2. And that was when Ron squealed. <laughs> oh, back-to-back squeals. All right. Can can you tell him to give an example of his squeal? <laughs> I would, I'm just he is very he is very comfortably in bed with the Steam Deck. <laughs> <laughs> um we then got a world premiere or yes, your grace, which is arriving in 2024. Yes, your grace, snowfall. Uh, I don't know what this is. I, I joked at the beginning of the trip. I said, "Hey, look, Pentiment Two. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but uh, this it, looks like um. Oh, it was made. Oh, it just came. Whoever made Massive Chalice, they made a trilogy. Um. Oh my gosh, I'm so mad I forgot the name of it off the top of my head right now. But based on the thumbnail that I'm looking at, that's what it looks like. But go ahead, David. Well, I was just going to say, it looked actually really cool. Like, I like the, it looked like it was a lot of narrative kind of elements and then just kind of managing some stuff in the midst of all of it. So very interested in how all of that works together. I Again, I was kind of coming off the high of Alan Wake, so I kind of missed a little bit. <laughs> He was passed but, out on the floor from fainting. <laughs> I had Ron like waving at me. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> the next couple of He's games some... are a little foggy for David. You'll have to forgive him. <laughs> yeah. He like suddenly woke out of a coma and perished Lily's arms. And was like, no, I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> Let me go back to my seat. I remember Warhammer looked really cool, though somehow that got burned into your brain there you go <laughs> uh so the next one was john carpenter's toxic commando because that sounds like a great game <laughs> <Toxic title. Commando. laughs> that, that sounds like the uh, back for blood crew needs to come back because <laughs> it's a co-op game and it's like okay yeah it's time for anthony david and ron to get in the saddle <laughs> Yeah, this uh, this does not sound like a game with a title that should fit in the year 2023, but here we go. It's from Saber and Focus Entertainment. And does anybody have any thoughts on this? Because I did not see this trailer. Uh, you've got to watch it at some point. I mean, it, it, it looks like a... It's another back for blood, left for dead kind of thing. Oh, really? And then, the, oh. yeah. Yeah, it's okay. like co-op zombie shooter. And oh. where you can apparently get in vehicles, uh, and you could get in a vehicle and back for blood too. And the uh, <laughs> the music playing behind it was horrible. <laughs> I can't remember what the song was, but Noah, do you happen to remember what song that was playing in the background? You're muted. Oh, there we go. You're still muted. Okay. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> no, I, I hit the button because I had to yawn. I hit the mute button because I had to yawn and apparently thought I was still yawning. Um, I, this is, I'm going to be honest, this is when I went and took my bathroom break. Uh, <laughs> so I, the, so the next couple, uh, no, the next, I can't, look, I got lucky because I missed this one and the next one. Um, but I came back at the perfect time with Spider Man. So yeah. Yeah, no, you've, okay. you've definitely got to check out. I, I, you've got to check out the Toxic Commando trailer when you get a chance, Anthony. It just uh, that name is an awful name. <laughs> I was just interested that John Carpenter wanted to be involved. <laughs> Does he know he's involved? Or did he just use his <laughs> name and send him a check in the mail? He's like, what? When did, what? Okay, like I'll take this. Who made it? Yeah, like, a video game called Toxic I'll, Commando. I'll, what I'll, I'll to do use another vacation. You know. Like, all right. Well, after Toxic Commando was Baldur's Gate three. I'm sure, I'm sure Ron had another squeal for that one. <laughs> he was definitely excited. This uh, is coming out 
August 31st. That's what I'm seeing. Yep. That's pretty oh, yeah. close. Yeah. All right. We had a lot of uh, games from this show that were, okay, this is coming out in the next six months. And a lot of them were coming out in the next three. Yeah. It's impressive. Something to so, look forward to. Oh, yeah. We're getting games left and right this year. Uh, then there was Spider-Man 2, but it was I, an interview. Uh, I squealed during that one. <laughs> yeah. I was uh, I definitely not expecting that. And when the box art popped up, I squealed because that box art is absolutely beautiful. I've <laughs> like, not that is seen it yet. Great looking box art. Okay. Uh, and as really soon as I the saw box the, art. well, as soon as I saw box art, I'm like, okay, we're getting, we're getting, we're getting date. a date. I, yep. on, honestly, I was, was sta- I was sitting there. I'm like, we're getting a date. There's no way they go through the whole interview. They go through all the different stuff about like talking about it with the the director Brian Antahar, and then of course they have to do that real slow play until it finally. Oh, so date, huh? <laughs> and uh, I t- again. Jeff Keeley's like contract person needs a raise because bro literally took the release date from Sony's event like two weeks ago <laughs> and got it in his show. And, the and I guarantee reveal. you the, I guarantee you the only reason that it was not in the Sony show is because of that contract. Cause I'm, they did not in the last two weeks be like, okay, we're, we got this nailed down now. That, that that's yeah. not how things work. <laughs> the the that sounds like the correct story to me. So, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Jeff Keighley be pulling some stuff off. And but October twentieth, October twentieth, twenty twenty three. Yep, yeah, we're getting Spider Man two. Uh, like <sighs> I've I got said, a, I've got Alan Wake Christmas. and Spider Man two within three days of each other. <laughs> Pray for me, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> many, many prayers. Many yep. prayers. I, I do think uh, it was still, funny. I I'll saw some still finishing Diablo four at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I saw some people that were like, Oh, Spider-Man flinched. I'm like, bro, they weren't ever coming out next to Starfield. Shut up. A bunch of Xbox people. Is that? Wow. Somebody said, Sp- yeah. I'm like, they put it where they wanted. It literally had nothing to do with that. Now, if anything, it's next to call of duty. Like, yeah. It's now, still not uh, an easy launch window. <laughs> now, God of War, I have some reason to feel like that was intentional <laughs> when Starfield got delayed out of the year and you stuck God of War right next to the original date. <laughs> that felt a little more intentional. This was just, oh, we, we're, we were figuring it out. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, after Spider-Man 2, there was a trailer for a game called Pal World. And uh, what the description I am reading on Eurogamer is, what if Pokemon had guns? Yes, <laughs> that is and, and honestly, that is exactly what it is. I mean, dude, this is the most... I, I'm like, bro, that's a Pidgey. I'm like, I'm just watching. I'm that's like, this is, the most, this is the most blatant ripoff. I've, I don't... Like, I'm worried Jeff is going to get sued. Literally, like a Nintendo cease and desist <laughs> lawyer is going to walk on stage and hand <laughs> him a letter. <laughs> like, while we're watching this. this. And then suddenly one of the creatures start firing missiles at us. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> I am, I'm just going to run this trailer while you guys talk about this. Oh, you I need to. Because the homie Electabuzz I, I, has a minigun, mind you. Bro, I'm, si- I'm just sitting back like, what is happening? Yeah. What, did, oh what did, did, did like... Did, did like someone kill Ash's mom and he's just out for vengeance or something? Yeah, so I don't this know. First, this first creature I see looks exactly like Evie, and then it looks like they're riding on water on a Gyarados. And <laughs> yep. I'm seeing Eventually other. Eventually, you'll see a Pidgey. <laughs> Boy, yeah, it's, there's know, Electabuzz oh, with the mini guy. <laughs> it's like, it starts off like, oh, it's like a Pokemon, like catch them all kind of thing, and then my homie pulls out a mini gun. <laughs> I see sheep <laughs> on turret. <laughs> it's Dragon Air, Dragon Knight with a <laughs> missile cannon I, on I each side like, of his torso. I don't like speaking too soon, but I think we have a game of the year nom on our hands. <laughs> <laughs> Zelda, insane. get out of the way. Yeah, We've got Pokemon with guns. <laughs> oh my gosh what is this is this 
I need to know the premise. Ratata became so- rat a tat tat. <laughs> 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 so it comes out in early access in january 2024 all right but um i feel like every once in a while on twitter i would see some random video of a game with animals like pokemon with guns and i'm wondering if this was the game the whole that time must have been it because <laughs> This is not the first time I've seen this kind of concept. Um, so I guess this was it. This wow. And what what a game. And just the I don't like saying audacity, but the fact of like they didn't just do like, oh, we're we're doing our own designed pocket monsters. Bro, they said this with their <laughs> chest out. Like, I mean, they were yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can name most of those. Like exactly. I saw the Lost Home, I saw Flaffy. I don't even play Pokemon that much, and I know that. <laughs> <laughs> the only one I did not see, and you know why, is Pikachu. That's the only one I did not see. Like that's for their release date trailer. <laughs> that's what they're. Thinking yeah, for. I saw Volpix Charmander crossover. <laughs> Gosh, that, that's season one content. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine if there was a crossover at some point oh. <laughs> oh freak that would be hysterical that wouldn't happen uh all right well um i'm sure for pure absurdity that game got a lot of conversation oh yeah but after that there was probably a more level-headed game called morning lights for black desert uh which is arriving june 14th did you guys get a look at this? I didn't. That was, I think I, we were all still reeling from Pokemon with guns at that point. <laughs> uh, but uh, the, <laughs> I remember Ron looking at me and said, you know, this is a game that I really wish I had more time to play <laughs> is Black Desert. Uh, oh, yeah. No, no. Oh, is this an expansion for Black Desert? Mm-hmm. Oh, Believe okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Black Desert is good. I played it before it came out. Um and I was like, holy frick. I need to make time for this. I never got to make time for it, but I was like, dear God, this is a really, really good game. Um okay, well that's actually exciting. God, I really need to this might be my excuse to play some Black Desert. Like I just need to <laughs> just need to bite the bullet and just do it. Um Well after that was uh, the Lord of the Rings Return to Moira, uh, which is coming out in the fall of 2023. Uh, we just had a, uh, you know, Middle Earth game that came out that was, uh, as David can describe. No, no. <sighs> yeah. Uh, this one does look like better. This I was like, it sounds like Middle this Earth, one. right? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is technically. Okay. I thought you were yeah, saying no, no, I was saying don't no, speak no. its name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're trying to we're trying to move on. Yeah, Ron was uh, talking about this one, like that. It's a, I guess, a builder game where you're kind of, I don't know if you're you're building the mines of Moria for the first time or if you're, you know, rebuilding Moria or whatnot. But I mean. Sounds cool. It sounds like a a logical idea <laughs> when it comes to Lord of the Rings. So I, like I a, like the idea, like in the style of Deep Rock Galactic, like building or I'm, I'm Minecraft. Not sure. <clears throat> I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, the, the trailer didn't Rock exactly Galactic. tell you so because oh, it was okay. more of a, a just a hey game's coming. Like a yeah, it, I don't know. Game, like, with them. The picture I'm looking at it almost has a scavengery type of look. Um, because they got backpacks and they're in a cave. I don't know. Okay, well, I guess we'll find out more of that. Hopefully, it's good. It well, after it after what we just went through, I don't think many much things can be worse. So, no, uh, and that's fair. There was some Final Fantasy stuff. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis for iOS and Android. Did that look interesting? Like, are, are we starting to get some mobile games that actually can pass as real games? Not just so stuff. It, it they 
put out like there was this trailer with Sephiroth that looked it's like, oh, my goodness, this looks really neat. And then it got the downgrade immediately. <laughs> like uh, it looks decent, but mm-hmm. it's not chibi or anything, but it it's not like. It, it just it, it didn't hit what I was hoping it would hit when I looked at it. What is it? Like, it seems like kind of a RPG ish kind of like fighting. A, like, like, does like, it have a story? I think it does. <laughs> you okay. can't really tell by the trailer. Like, it, they give you story in the trailer, but it, I'm not sure if it, what it's exactly following. Okay. But it looks like a proper turn based kind of strategy yeah, game. Definitely. Like, there's a the party system and stuff. Um, oh, okay. All right. I mean, I'm not a big mobile gamer not really my my thing but like if you know if it's a good game that's you know for the the mobile gamers out there and i know there are a lot uh it should be a fun time yeah uh apparently there's a closed beta test for android between june 8th and the 28th that's like that's a long time (laughs) as today actually (laughs) as, as of this recording until the end of the month so that's that's a lot of time with that well, after that, there was a game called Banisher's Ghosts of New Eden, which will release <clears throat> towards the end of 2023. Any thoughts I'm, on that? I'm actually very excited for that game. Uh, it, the first trailer was actually somewhat heartbreaking because you find out this this guy has lost his wife, uh, but she's actually a ghost. <clears throat> that seems to be helping you fight other ghosts. It's almost like she's part of the spirit realm that's trying to uh, push the bad ghosts away, I guess. And the combat actually looks pretty decent. Uh, I think I think it's actually done. It's done by Don't Nod. I don't know if this is the vampire team, but it looks like there's going to be a lot of different choices that you'll have as far as narrative and whatnot. And uh, again, I just I, I liked the way the narrative flowed in <clears throat> Vampire. I'm a big fan of the game uh, Greedfall in the sense of like it was one of those games where the combat was okay, but you'd fight in like the same exact three environments every five minutes, it felt like. But the story and the lore behind it was fantastic. So I'm, I feel like we're going to get a really great story and lore behind all of that's going on. And it, it feels like a very unique setting with this mm-hmm. uh, almost colonial. Uh, I don't know that colonial is the right word for it, but it feels almost like a colonial ghost fighting kind of thing uh, that's going on. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what, where it goes. Especially like narratively, because um, there was the part in the trailer that really caught my, my eye was the moment of where you could spare or sacrifice someone. So if that kind of decision making can lead to like consequences and effects, you know, in different branches later on down the line, I, I really hoping, it, you know, if it's like vampire, it should. And obviously don't not is the ones they're, they're the ones I believe behind life is strange series. If I'm right. So yes, if anybody knows how to make moral choices matter, yeah. it's, it's them. So, it looks real, and like you said, the setting. I really, really dug the setting too. I like Don't Nod, so um, this uh, this looks like a game that's a, a little bit outside their norm. But based on the trailer, it looks it looks polished. So it doesn't yeah. what they've shown does not look like um. <clears throat> like cinematic trailer kind of, you know, specific, like it looks like in game stuff. Yeah, all so, that you, all um, that you saw in this one was in game. Yeah. And they had a, so, they had a very short amount of in game from the last trailer. And that trailer was mostly CG. <clears throat> yeah. So I got, I got, I want to say high expectations, but I, I, I'm looking forward to it. Yep. Oh, by the way, on the, the, the Lord of the Rings game, uh, Deep Rock Galactic was the right call. That's what it actually sounds like. It it follows kind of similar to. Oh, okay. See, I can look at a thumbnail and give you exactly what the game is. Boom. There you go. 
You should listen to my opinion videos on GamingTrend.com. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next was Like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name. That was shown. I need to play Like a Dragon. <laughs> the, uh, I need to go back uh, to it, yeah. The, uh, I need to play that. Uh, I need to finish the other one. Gosh. Because uh, every time I play that, I'm like, God, I need to play more of this. Well, and I <laughs> think they're about so to have their own little summit again. Uh, RGG. Are they? So, so because, yeah, they've got, they don't just have like a dragon. They've got the uh, Yakuza 8 as well. That's well, yeah. Coming yeah. Up, so yep. <clears throat> they've got stuff to show. Absolutely do. Uh, what did you guys think of the trailer? It, it looks like more Yakuza. <laughs> like I don't, I don't, yeah, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, it, I, <sighs> it's a series that I desperately want to play. I just do not have the time to. Um, <laughs> and everyone that I've talked to who has played the series uh, speaks nothing but highly of them. So, well, you can ask Anthony. That was another one of those games where I was like, I was not sure about it, and then. I played <laughs> eight or seven for a little bit because I was taught wanted to talk about it on the podcast and I was enjoying myself. Yeah, like a dragon. Yeah, um, yeah. David is not definitely, as you know, Noah. He is not one to play those kind of games, but uh, it's so ridiculously absurd, <laughs> and it leans into it and loves it and embraces it that you that you fall in love with it as well <laughs> with the, the yep. absurdity um, and it's totally japanese absurdity so the fact that they they did it in such a way that even a person like david enjoyed it um you know it it speaks to how well they balance between the real like actual serious moments in the game <laughs> and absurdity. the absurd yeah so if you can get more of that with uh, like a dragon, Gaiden, hey, uh, I'm in. Uh, and yes, I am kind of watching the trailer right now, and yeah, it, it does look more like like more Yakuza, more like a dragon. So it's not a bad thing. All right, if it ain't broke, keep doing it. Then it was another game called Under the Waves. Coming out August 29th in 2023. What did you guys think of this? It was a very unique looking indie game that I'm I'm actually looking forward to seeing more of. Uh, I, I don't know everything that's going on, but the whole narrative style of it sounds really interesting. The gameplay looked really interesting. I, I just want more of it, like to, to, to understand everything that's going on in the world. Uh, so uh, uh, one of those surprise, it, it feels like every time we get to this time of year, there's at least one surprise indie game of, oh man, I really didn't see this coming. And Under the Waves could be that indie game for me this year. Yeah, I'm I'm watching the trailer and I want to know, like, is this going to be one where we have to you know, play through a story and like go out, scavenge, come back to like a base or is it, you know, kind of a soul, solely exploratory game. Um, my biggest fear is what is waiting for us? Like <laughs> there, there is going to be something scary and, you know, <clears throat> out there and I'm going to have to be sitting far away from my TV screen when it inevitably jump scares me. So under the uh, about, it says under the waves is a narrative driven adventure game about the engulfing power of grief. Great. We're just going to cry. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a oh. The secret is the waves are your tears. <laughs> <laughs> And you're going to drown in them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. You actually start above land, but as the grief consumes you, you, <laughs> fall, you create your it's own a metaphor. ocean. Metaphor. Oh, goodness. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Uh, well. I know. I know metaphors. <laughs> right, Noah? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. That's a Guardians uh, 3 joke, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah. You know me. I don't, I don't catch that stuff. <laughs> 
Well, after that, there was something completely uh, you could grief on in a different way. <laughs> Call of Duty Season 4. Bang, bang. <laughs> It's it, another it, season. That's all David has to say about Call of Duty. We could just move the frick on. <laughs> uh, I'll say this. It had a pretty banging trailer. Like the the new Warzone map looks really cool. Uh, the the music behind the trailer was very loud in our venue, but it was pretty I, I liked the music. I thought it was pretty good. So what what's what is this uh season based on? I mean, I'm sure you already know, so <laughs> Well the, the probably already played. you probably already I, unlocked I, the whole battle pass already. I have, I have not. <laughs> <laughs> uh really it seems like they're really focusing hard on there's a new Warzone map called Vondel. Uh it I believe it's I believe it's Beanox actually who made this one and they were the ones that were behind Fortune's Keep in I may be completely wrong in what I'm thinking here, but in any case, I am very much looking forward to this map because the makers of this map just have a very good understanding of what makes a good map. And this is a smaller, another smaller Warzone map. And I think those are the best. I, I these battle royale maps that make things drag on for twenty. 30 minutes or just you, you just get bored <laughs> and sure. these are just fast frantic and fun so i was watching the trailer and I like the I urban am, environment yeah so it's urban lots of graffiti mm -hmm. colorful uh which yep. is not something you could say about call of duty uh i mean it still has got its browns but uh the there's grays. plenty of injection yeah <laughs> plenty of uh color injection there uh so i'm not sure i'm not sure what that means in terms of if that if that mean if that does mean anything or if that's just a stylistic choice that they chose to bring out for the trailer because of the urban environment urban, well I, I don't even like something that, word, that i think so yeah. so this is uh it's a, amsterdam is actually the basis of of the map interesting so Amsterdam but, full of graffiti. That's, now I want to <laughs> yeah. know. Uh, the interesting thing is one of the new features they threw in is actually dynamic fog. Uh, okay. It's actually going to roll in at different density levels. So very interesting that they're testing some of these things out with this map. So yeah. I, I feel like see. more battle royales should have dynamic weather. That would be interesting. <laughs> with my eyesight, it's going to make it worse. I can't see to begin with without fog. I don't need more <laughs> fog, guys. That's, oh. you know, that's real life. You got yeah. fog in the real world. You got to be careful. Yep. Got to have my realism in the, <laughs> in the video games. Yeah. I, I just run at gunshots. David knows this. I, I don't look where I run. I just head in the direction I hear fighting. It's not always a bad philosophy. Well, the next game that they showed at the Game Award, the uh, Game Award Summer Game Fest <laughs> was, uh, sorry, I'm looking at the a trailer on the Game Award channel. Um, Fay Farm, I don't know what this is because I'm seeing combat. I'm seeing animals. I am not seeing farming. There so, is some well, farming okay. I, at the beginning I did of see it. some farming. Yes, yes. I, true. Uh, but at the latter part of the trailer, I <laughs> saw less farming. So <laughs> I was like, okay, what, what is this game? Um, I can't tell if it is a... I guess there is a little bit of combat in... Um, I'm, what's that super popular farming game? Why am I forgetting your name? Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley, thank you. Um, there is a little bit of combat in there, isn't it? Like you can uh, make. If your own there is, it's very there. minor. Yeah, yeah. I'm this, not saying it's a this, major. This component. feels like it's got a little more like outside of your farm, so to speak. Yeah. Like it feels like there's a lot more going on outside of it. <clears throat> like a much more okay. like colorful, you know, friendly version of like a Rune Factory or something like that. So. That yeah, that probably is a closer example, Rune Factory, because it looked like they were roaming through a dungeon almost. Yeah, that, so, that's what know. gave me the vibes, along with like the farming sim aspects of it. It's a farm sim RPG, is what it is actually brought up as. So, 
There you go. If you want to hear more from Noah and his predictions and accuracy, you can read GamingTrend.com. There you go. And then Ben Brode took the stage along with Jeff Keighley to talk about Marvel Snap, which is a fantastic game, by the way. Let's talk about a new mode called Conquest. Have any of you played Marvel Snap? No. So uh, I need to pull up my list real quick. Um, in Marvel Snap came out last year, and every year since 2021, I've been making a list of my favorite games in order. Um, and so for the longest time, Sifu was number one, and it stayed number one for 2022. The Witch Queen for Destiny 2 was number two. <clears throat> And then all of a sudden, Marvel Snap came out, <laughs> and I played Marvel Snap, and I played Marvel Snap, and I played Marvel Snap, and I kept playing <laughs> Marvel Snap, and I was like, holy <laughs> frick, this game is really, really good. And it jumped to number two on my list for 2022, because it was that dang good. Um, one of the most original card games uh, that simplifies the concept, and yet you feel every instance of strategy and uh, tenseness that you would feel in Hearthstone or Legends of Runeterra, all within seven minutes. It's a really fantastic card game. I don't know what Conquest is, though, so <laughs> I didn't get to watch the trailer for this, um, but I am interested in it. At this point, anything Marvel Snap does... Uh, that's that's good for the game. I am into it. And then, uh, wow. Okay, so some of this I am looking at for the first time. <laughs> King <laughs> Arthur somehow has made a return to life. King Arthur Legends Rise coming to PC and mobile. Does anybody know what this is? I feel like I do, but I'll be honest, I was not paying a lot of attention right then because I was, again, covering a bunch of things. <laughs> it's, it's, I, I'm trying ben to Brode uh, got you. just figure out what kind of game it's going to be because it's just a purely cinematic trailer. It, it was hard for me to get okay. any kind of like read on you know what its identity is going to be as a game. Um, but I mean, cinematic was fun. Good cinematic. Turn-based RPG. That's what it is. I saw a dragon. That was what I thought. <laughs> I was like, all right, there's a dragon. Probably turn-based RPG. Coming to mobile also. Um, so I am curious what kind of mechanics will be in there. You know, those mobile those mobile players, they, they have a different way of enjoying their games. So I'm curious to know how much of this game is just game versus gotcha mechanics but if uh you know what i'm not going to try to compare games anymore because i can't remember <laughs> names of anything anymore so moving on wayfinder a free-to-play game on pc playstation 5 and xbox series x is coming later this year what did you guys make of this well, i remember them actually announcing this at the game awards and uh, like I've, I didn't get an actual chance I, to test the beta. I actually have got a code and put it in and downloaded it, and then just never had the time. Uh, I think I was even away that weekend. But I've heard good things about it. Uh, people who've played it have said good things about it. Uh, it made me think of I, I think Noah and I were talking about it. Kind of might, reminded you of the kind of the Kingdoms of Amalur kind of feel when it came to like combat and look and such. So, but this one is an online game so yeah it, it's third person you have um kind of different classes that have like their own unique abilities and you'll have a light a heavy a special attack you know the uh the usual uh, for for that genre um yeah mmo would definitely more online because there's a online like hub world mm -hmm. i played a little bit of the beta um it was enough for me to hop in play for like an hour and be like I'll dig this, you know, I'll, I'll wait for, you know, it to fully release before I, I dive heavily into it. So, and like, I, I got really good impressions, uh, playing it and free to play 
great entry point for a lot of people to try out. So I, I think it'll be, it might, you know, it's not going to reinvent the genre or anything, but I think it'll have a good population uh, of people that will enjoy it. Yeah, sometimes all you need is a, a different coat of paint, different kind of characters and stuff. Not everything has to redefine the genre. Okay. Well, after that, um, there's a game called Stellaris Nexus by Paradox Interactive. Who's got thoughts on that? The games just keep on rolling. Uh, I'll admit that I didn't really have any. <laughs> it, it was one of those... I, I hate to be that guy, but that that game style does not interest me. <laughs> like the, I guess. Well, I mean, what game? What style uh, is well, it? Well, Stellaris is a, I believe it's a 4X game. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and I'm but just not much of a 4X person. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah, never, really never been in my wheelhouse. Me. Like, I know, I know Ron really enjoys them, but. <laughs> But yeah, that's, that's just not my style. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> He's more agreed. Of a Call of Duty guy. Like if I play, well, if I play a turn a strategy game, like it's usually like a Civilization or something like that. So yeah, don't blame me. All right. Well, there was another game after that because there's still more. Uh, Space Trash Scavenger <laughs> by Paradox Arc and Square Play Games. <laughs> You guys are laughing, so I, I, I must have just—I'll be honest—I question. must have just straight up missed it because <laughs> I don't even remember that game getting announced. <laughs> uh, I'm looking at the trailer right now, and it looks really B tier. I can't tell if it's B tier on purpose. Like it's I actually feel stiff. bad. I don't know how I missed that. You saw Nate Cage walking backstage from oh. the side. It was it was forty five seconds long. I literally could have looked away for two seconds and just missed it completely. Yeah, like, I, so I kid you space. not. I don't remember this trailer. I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> yeah, from what I'm watching, you're in space and you're building things. You're also exploring. You're also shooting at stuff. You're scavenging. So I I the game is called Space Trash Scavenger. So I guess you find space trash and figure out how to make stuff with it. That, that's my guess. I guess there's enough trash in space to justify making this kind of game. Okay. Maybe it'll be good. <laughs> there's Speaking a market space, for something everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Borg made an appearance for a Star Trek Infinite trailer. Um... Okay. It's another like purely cinematic trailer. It's another uh, strategy game, I guess. Oh, what's a strategy full, game? Full reveal on Picard Day, June 16th, yep. 2023. So. It says grand oh. strategy game. So I guess we'll find out Ooh. what is so grand about it. So it's apparently, infinite. literally, Paramount has something to do with it. So. <laughs> Um, I don't know if that's because it's Star Trek, so Paramount just puts their name on everything Star Trek. Um, even if it was a board game, it'd probably find Paramount's logo on it. But they might, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yep, somewhere. Yeah, but if it's a strategy, I don't. Oh, I wonder if it's a like a XCOM type of strategy game. Okay, could be. I'm just curious yeah. how that would work. To be honest with you, why? How couldn't it work? <laughs> The strategy game. Um, maybe it's not term. I don't know. Strategy. That's just it's so yeah, something Star reaching. Trek. I could see more similar to a four X, if that makes sense. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. I could see it like that too. It's made by Nimble Giant. I am not sure uh, their portfolio. Okay. Oh, this was a thing. Wow, they showed this. Uh, there was a trailer for Twisted Metal, apparently. Uh, you really gotta watch that. Uh, I kind of okay. sat there, I'm like, well, this is Twisted Metal. <laughs> okay. Like, this is exactly <laughs> as cheesy as I thought this was going to be. Oh, dear. Uh, okay. Will Arnett is voicing Sweet Tooth. You know, I don't, I don't really pay attention to actors that much, uh, but I have enough familiarity with uh, Will, Will Arnett to know that 
that's an interesting choice. Like I actually like the vocal choice. Like it, he fits the gravelly okay. voice of it. It's the constant puns that were happening as he shoved Anthony Mackie around. <laughs> okay. All right. I trust your judgment. Like I'm not imagining this is going to be fantastic, but it really, I don't think it was necessarily as bad as everybody else thought. Like it, it felt almost like it was intentionally bad. If that makes sense. Oh, I understand that. <laughs> Which is exactly what I would expect from this. <laughs> All right. Well, we move back to video games and <laughs> got two movie trailers. Put, no. Yeah. Okay. We won't have this any of that is, at Xbox. <laughs> uh, Lisfunga, the time shift warrior. I don't know if I'm saying that. Lisfanga, Lisfunga. I don't remember the, how you say it, but it was such a bad, like the, the game looks good, but the name is just not a good choice yeah. in my opinion. <laughs> Yeah. Um, <coughs> Look kind of like okay. Hades. Yeah, like a... But with like time elements. Oh, frick. Really yeah. cool. I, yeah, <laughs> he's like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can see well, the focus. I went focus into like the animation and I was like, oh, he's snap. Like, I like Lisfanaga. <laughs> <laughs> well, and give okay, me Topanga. So <laughs> I, I see, you know, it's a, it's a black protagonist, so I imagine Lisfanga is probably having something to deal with uh, maybe something in African territory or something dealing with that. So um, I have no tough idea. Game to remember for, for you know, for uh, most the, I'll just say the average audience. Yep. Well, that's definitely um, the worst thing about the reveal because the game looks great in my opinion looks really good yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the time like, looked really being good. able to like rewind and like have your original um like i guess image go out and do a text for you it, you know while you're attacking simultaneously is really cool yeah i am curious to know how that mechanic is used i want more of lisponga <laughs> give it to me um next we got some more stuff on Immortals of Avium. I know you're high on this one, David. What do you think? It, to me, it's another one that just every time you see it, it looks it looks crisper, it looks prettier, it looks nicer, and it, that's just kind of indicative of they keep having new and more final builds to show. And I would assume at this point we're pretty close to the final final build being it's around the corner in July at the end of it. So. Uh, you know, I, I look forward to messing around with it, but I, I think it's in good shape is the biggest thing I can say. I, I've liked the look of it, and we'll see how it goes. From what I am seeing of this trailer right now, uh, this looks like the most polished version of it for sure. Yes. Um, every single trailer I've come away with it look feeling like, I don't know, this might be kind of the worst EA original game I have seen. Um but uh, this trailer looks much, much better. Yep. Um, it, it looks like a game worthy of the EA original tag. Like I said, a lot more final product is what we're seeing yeah. here, I feel like. It's ready to launch kind of thing. Yeah, very, very much closer to it. Um, smoother animations. Uh, it just generally looks, even just the look of it feels better. Um, ooh, the way these uh, the shots are coming out. He did this little like thirty second Hadouken. That was <laughs> I'm really enjoying cool. Anthony's like live reactions. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, he's just sitting there, and all of a sudden, ooh, <laughs> like, <laughs> like. yeah, okay. I'm seeing some uh, some Borderlands looking mechanics over here. Okay, yeah, this this. Looks good. Looks good. I, I want more. Okay, I am in. I am finally <laughs> fully in for Immortals of Avion. I was going to play it anyway, but uh, that it looks good now. All right, we got two more. Uh, the one you have been waiting for, uh, Fortnite. Uh, Fortnite, Chapter yeah. 4, Season 3, Wilds. Uh, the fact that this is the second to the last trailer 
just demonstrates how big Fortnite still is. <laughs> like, I what said to Ron, I'm like, I know, for. I know people love to hate on this game, but there are so many important things that have happened in our industry because of Fortnite. I know. I agree. I still contend to this day. I will. I will die on a hill and with this take. Uh, Fortnite should have won Game of the Year at some point. Yep. Uh, so. This wow! This character has a map, map etched on their chest. Okay, <laughs> interesting. So yes, that is coming. Another season of Fortnite. They're on four chapters. I don't even know how many chapters or seasons a chapter has, but the fact that they're on their fourth is fascinating. And this is season three <laughs> of chapter four, and it has so. Optimus Prime in it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Does it? Yep. Yep. Oh my gosh, I didn't even get to the end. Good <laughs> lord. <laughs> All right. Well, the last one, um, maybe some people predicted it. Okay, so I do know one game was leaked. Um, we already talked about it. I don't think this got out. This kind of got out. And it's not in the way that we would think in the sense of it's definitely out. It got out in the sense of they dropped their seventh question and said, we will have more news soon because they've been answering questions on, on Twitter, like doing these little uh, graphics. Uh, And And then people truly noticed that they asked seven questions and they were like, Oh my God. (laughs) Then, then the link broke to the site. That was, that was the other thing. Okay. So there's no direct. Yeah. It it was two things. uh, Okay. Okay. All right. Well, it's Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and whoo! Uh, I need to get a PlayStation Five. <laughs> I, I kept. I, I said earlier, we we. I remember watching Advent Children, and the fact that we are now playing what that looks like is insane. Because Advent it's, it's, Children was. I, I don't know which. I, I'm sure Noah's seen it. I don't know if you've seen that. Anthony, oh, like I, the movie. I, I have the DVD. <clears throat> yeah, I I've, I've got the Blu-ray. Like children. it's fantastic, and yeah, just the fact that this like it looks even better <laughs> than I would say children. That, but it looks like, good. Like, it's at least on par with it. So it's yeah, just it's the not fact that we're par, able to but play it, is, it. Yeah, it's very, 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 very good. It's just insane. Uh, yeah, like. Yeah. <sighs> And everything in that trailer looks so good. And Square made such a good decision because they could have very easily just done a half baked remake of this game. Like they, they, and people would have been happy. People were, you know, they might have crumbled a little bit, but I mean, they would have had a, a prettier looking version of Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. Instead, they took the time to be like, how do we remake this and make it fresh and reinvent? Mm-hmm. And it, it, now we're at this alternate timeline, Final Fantasy VII. And it's like, now instead of being like, oh, really? They're doing this in three episodes? It's, oh my gosh, this is so worth the money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It, it's just incredible that they've been able to. I, I think I'm more surprised they pulled this off. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it's really just surprising. Yeah. I think, you know, it's, 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 it's interesting because when Final Fantasy came out, it was groundbreaking for its time. It was the biggest RPG. It was the most interesting, you know, the cinematics, the story, the length, the all that. It was it was defining. Yep. And instead of trying to recreate that magic with the Final Fantasy VII remake, they i would say that square enix has kind of defined what a remake truly is like in in this era um it's the you know, we've seen remakes <laughs> yeah um you know you can't you can't make the final fantasy story like so fresh and so interesting you can't really make the mechanics and what final fantasy 7 is so uniquely new again anymore so it's like, what can we do? Let's just remake the whole thing. 
<laughs> like tell a story, tell the story in a different way, maybe almost, almost alternate timeline ish. And it's working. Like, <laughs> it is absolutely it, it, working. You sit there again and go, this is genius. <laughs> like you're, oh, you're, man. It's like, apparently, this, apparently all of the incredible smart people work on final fantasy in this company. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is taking Mario from 2d to Mario 64 and 3d. And it's just yep. like in every step of the way, this is, this is working. I mean, how many times has the same exact, the same game <laughs> redefined the industry? <laughs> like this, it's like the <laughs> doofenshmirtz, you know. <laughs> if this happened, if this happened, all the, if I got a nickel, I had a nickel for every time this happened, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's surprising this has happened more than once. <laughs> yeah, uh, but that's the thing, like, <sighs> like Final Fantasy Seven. Like did something for RPGs in general, yep. um, and let alone you know people consider it the greatest game of all time. Um, and now it's flipping doing it again. <laughs> yeah, now the remake. Well, is. that's the thing. It's not doing that. Like it's it because of where Final Fantasy VII sits, and Final Fantasy VII remake cannot do that. Like it cannot be the greatest game of all time simply oh, yeah. because. The original exists and what it did for uh the industry at the time like what square enix is doing is taking mechanics i mean tales of symphonia has already been doing this stuff um you know but it's taking the story and all the characters that you love and remaking the music which is absolutely beautiful and doing all that and then saying this is a remake. This is this is how you guys do a remake. That is what they're defining. Yeah. That well, is, and, that, and that's what I mean. It when I'm saying the that. industry. Yeah, it's it's yeah. the somehow this has managed to change how you do something twice. <laughs> yeah, not the exact same thing, but it's just the whole thing of man. This same game has impacted the industry in a defining way twice. <laughs> Yes, this is true. Uh, and you're seeing more developers figure that out. Like, this is what yeah. are, the Resident Evil 4 remake. That was a good remake. Like, it oh, was yeah. very close to the original, but there was enough difference in it to, to give people something fresh, which is what you want in a remake. It, it, yep. You don't want it to be the exact same thing. Um, this isn't movies. You know, this is something we play. And when you, when you feel like you've played the thing and it just looks prettier, it, it, that's not deep enough. That's not interesting yeah. enough. Well, of course, the so, thing with four that's so impressive is it's still a recent game, and it's still something we've gotten remasters mm -hmm. of. So, yeah, so they had to do something different with it, but it, no. it's, it's the smart move. So, no. any remake that pretty much doesn't live up to that standard just isn't good enough, really. Yep. So it's a, it's a high bar to set. Maybe some people could say Square's being a little greedy and making it three episodes, but hey, I mean, if it's if you three make them this good, fledged, <laughs> yeah, this looks like it's going to be good. So if it's, uh, you know, one game is 40 hours of, of legit goodness and the other one is 40 hours of legit goodness, not just pad and nonsense, fine, I'll pay for it. Oh, yeah, Let the it, market decide. they managed to explore new stories that we didn't have that were maybe even just alluded to uh mm -hmm. and that's just that's just amazing that just that you would have the creativity to figure that out to 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 go further with it and it's not just making something up you're literally having to take it's it would be like taking a script from 20 years ago and being like okay this person had one line how do we give them a full page <laughs> Like, yeah, yeah. And that is just incredible. <laughs> and it, it certainly looks like they're doing the exact same thing again because that trailer looked incredible. It just looked good. <laughs> yeah, I, I have nothing to add. I'm just ready for this thing to come out. I'm just I, like, oh, like no. it's perfect. The uh, the little tagline on Eurogamer was like, who cares about Final Fantasy 16? It's like, yep, that made me forget. <laughs> All about Final Fantasy Sixteen. <laughs> just, Actually, you're right. I, I, I leapfrog six. Just get me to you know rebirth. <laughs> like I, I'm just I. It's exciting. 
I wasn't, I don't think I was, you know, I don't know the general consensus, but like I kind of expected it to show up in some point. I wasn't expecting a release window though. And like as much gameplay as we got, I was very surprised, but very happy. (laughs) So, which they had said winter. So I kind of figured we were at least getting close to whatever they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And then when they said early 2024, I'm like, Oh, cool. That's exactly what I expected. Uh, yeah, I, I figured best case scenario was December. Like yeah. if, if it was this year, that was literally best case scenario. So uh, yeah. throw it in the February window. That makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. It's, uh, the original, the first one launched in March, didn't it? I, I April. Think? It was April. April. It was actually, it was a COVID game. Yep. I remember. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, okay. Yeah. So I guess uh, we're at the point now where. Um, Sorry. Fat, I, uh, the, I just remember because it was during a COVID and we were curbside and it being such a big game, the amount of people that like would come through and there's just cars lined up because we were doing curbside service. It was just like cars <laughs> lined up and I'm just going out handing people the game. Like, <laughs> like uh, it's a fascinating memory in, in your life. <laughs> Pan- pandemic video games. Um, so yes, we're at the point in history where now a marketing point can be the fact that this game will be on two discs for physical. Yep. And people are excited. <laughs> <laughs> I am reading a YouTube comment right now uh, that says, uh, where did it go? Uh, definitely getting physical just to feel the nostalgia for putting in the second disc. <laughs> That's where we are at. In history, um, I, I guess somebody I heard somebody stream on, on the live stream, huh? I guess the plus side is that the I mean pro that means it's probably all on the disc. It's true, <laughs> you don't. Yeah, it's not just glorified download. Um, I heard somebody on the live stream scream when that image came up. They said, "Yeah, it's got on two discs." <laughs> <laughs> The one oh homie, God. like that was for him. Like the devs were like, yeah, we right. can really probably do one disc, but like Phil Let's over here two. really wants us to put it, you know, do two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, man. Phil's grandkids really want it to be, you know, on two. So we got to. So that was all the games shown during the two hour show, Summer Game Fest. I thought it was a really solid show. Like it was another one of those, like the, there was some really great reveals. There was a couple lulls. There's some good middle ground, solid stuff that it's like, okay, cool. I, I'd like to mm-hmm. check that out. Uh, and, you know, most of the games were interesting to look at with, it was a good variance. You know, it's, it's not like the old ones where it's like, okay, thanks a lot, Jeff. There's the third horror space game. <laughs> So, or like the string of sports games, you know, it's like, yeah, mm, yeah. definitely a good, I, I enjoyed it. I, I really had a fun time with it. Um, you know, nothing was like mind melting, like where did they reveal this, you know, out of left field. Uh, <laughs> but I, I thought it was fun. I, I really enjoyed it, especially rebirth. I am really excited. Um, I was thinking about the, the arc of the show started really strong had the middle lull yeah middle lull and then ends really strong and i feel like in general i think that is the flow of a showcase that i like i don't like you know start it off slow and then build up to the the good stuff because it takes too long i don't really like everything like Mm jam-packed in the beginning and then it drops Uh, i think the best way to do it is just figure out the best order for the middle stuff, the stuff mm-hmm. that doesn't hit us hard, but it it's good enough to keep our interest. That's obviously really difficult, but um, especially with two hours to fill. Yeah. Yeah. But I thought it was, up. yeah. Um, again, I didn't watch the whole thing, but just going through all the, the trailers, I think I, I would have been locked in for pretty much all of it because yep. it, it felt like you don't know what's coming next. And I think that's the general feel that you're looking for. You start off strong. It gives you that feeling of like, oh, frick, this this is going to be a great showcase. And then that middle area, you're just always feeling like, oh, I don't know what's coming next. 
you throw in spider-man 2 is in the middle that what was the thing yep the release date that mattered you didn't know yep. that that was coming so not in the slightest mm-hmm. yeah so that that's kind of what you want to do in that middle space and then end with some bangers um some absolute like oh my god and i think that's the way all showcases sh- should work um I, th- I think that flows really well yeah that seven re- rebirth was a big get like that was that was a really big get so that, i think yeah. jeff was even like thank you so much please thank you thank you for letting me in my show with this <laughs> yeah seriously to, did uh, did you see the uh the final fantasy how he trolled everybody noah uh, he said speaking of final fantasy doordash your <laughs> oh, yeah. the, the whole crowd went oh <laughs> Wait, what happened? So, so there's a point where jeff is like i for, i don't know even what the point was but he goes speaking of final fantasy and the whole crowd goes oh. and then all of a sudden he goes doordash it's a, it was an actual like final fantasy collector's box or something for <laughs> <laughs> for if you did a DoorDash or something, and every oh, you hear the whole crowd just deflate and ah, <laughs> like I mean, the, one of the best trolls ever. Happened. Yeah, well, yeah. he knew what was at the end too. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. The, the way He's he like, introed that too was amazing. Like uh, the rumors are true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get to see he knows that. How to host I got to go back. He's he's a showman. He's a great showman. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He, he, Jeff is really hit or miss when it comes to his showmanship, <laughs> but when he hits, it hits. Oh yeah. All right. Well, that is uh, that. That was that was our very was, long that summer that game fest to break yeah. down. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, we uh, <laughs> we took about as long as the summer game fest itself. So yep. Uh, all right. Well, there's going to be more coming on the site. Um, I'm going to figure out what my thoughts are about Summer Game Fest. What in the world I want to say on my little video column on YouTube. Well, a lot more write-ups are coming from Ron and myself from here, as well as yep. uh, I'm sure we'll probably react to Xbox and Ubisoft shows and Capcom show because they threw one out there. <laughs> Oh, they're doing no, a show. They have Capcom. Yeah. They're not doing like a live show, but they're doing something on, I believe, the twelfth. So, yeah. Yeah. oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Nice. Well, I'll be so, a, uh, I'll I'll be at a wedding during the Xbox show, but I'm I am going to watch it afterwards. My I, <laughs> taking the day off on Monday. So well, that, that, I'm just I'll say this: it. they're promising a lot from the way they keep talking. So, and they're yeah, on I'm, I'm going I'm interested. to read it, and then I'm just going to watch it. <laughs> just going to yep. want to watch it. They have a lot of momentum right now. Yep. Well, I don't know that they have a lot of momentum. I think they have a lot of hype building. I'm just, I'm very interested in the whole, it's just, it's nothing. None of our first party is, is CG. It's all gameplay or an engine. And it makes me immediately think that either means there's not a lot of first party. (laughs) Oh, and sorry. We should I, worry about ta- that. Talking about Xbox? I was talking about Capcom. That's why. Oh, was okay. Saying, oh, oh, yeah. Capcom, yeah, yeah, yeah. ton of momentum. Yeah, that's that's uh, what I was referencing. Then... <laughs> I was like, really? what do you mean? Yeah, yeah. But the, but then yeah, I thought thinking... you mentioned Xbox. Oh, gotcha. too. Oh, oh, that's no, my no, bad. No. Yeah, but then Xbox. But then it was also the uh, the in engine thing. I'm like, huh, technically, when Halo Infinite was revealed, that was all in engine, and all that was was a bunch of fields and then some Marines walking in them. <laughs> So no, we no, will no, see. No, don't say that. That that's that, that was that in was engine. A, that literally says at the bottom in engine footage. I, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying <laughs> the, the reveal wasn't just Marines walking through the fields. <laughs> that was a lot talking, of it. There wasn't. Are you talking about the original reveal? The the original yeah, reveal the one for where Halo everybody Infinite. was like the graphics are awful or. No, this is this is the one that was like the actual original oh, trailer, okay. like the first oh, yeah, trailer yeah. ever. It was it was essentially showcasing their engine. Oh yes, 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 yes. Yeah, that had a, that had its own specific purpose. Yeah. Well, I'm just um, saying though, is if you use that as your in-engine footage thing, then that means that people there are too many people immediately expecting that no CG and all in engine and all that automatically means we're going to get five minutes of gameplay out of each one of these things. Oh, yeah. And oh. people need to slow down. <laughs> yes. Like enjoy the show. Don't overhype your expectations or you're going to end up frustrated when certain things don't show up that you think should show up. 
I feel like we just had this conversation. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> PlayStation showcase. I don't oh, know. Yeah. That sounds familiar. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, I agree. The, uh, I think we're I, for some great shows though. I, 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 I agree. I think, I think the in engine is actually going to be fable. Um, they're going to show something in engine. Hey, at least it's still in development. We shall see. All right. Yeah, that'll do it for us. So, David, you got more to do. So we'll be back next week to catch up more on Summer Games Fest. We'll talk Xbox. We'll talk Capcom. And if we have time, maybe we'll throw in a game. <laughs> but, if, <laughs> but if not, we got we got games. We got lots of... I've actually played other games besides Diablo. So I'm nice. excited to talk about them. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Lots, lot, this June is going to be lots of fun, so look forward to it. All right. We'll talk to you later. Deuces. Peace. Later.